Generative optimization is pretty fascinating. The idea is to define loads and constraints and let the computer design the part to optimize for weight and stiffness. It does this by only leaving material in the most critical areas. Here are a few examples of how this can be applied for a cantilever beam, bridge, and bike frame. This video is a look into how a wheel would be designed using generative design. It's a high level overview, but the concept can be applied to many different wheel geometries. All of this design was done in Fusion 360, a powerful and economic modeling solution offered by Autodesk. Check it out as it has free versions for students, hobby use, and startups. The first step is drawing the defining solid. The defining solid should be as large as possible. Fill the part dimensions out to their maximums based on space constraints. We're going to let the computer optimize the ideal shape, we just need to let it know the boundaries it can work in. A wheel is radially symmetric, however Fusion 360 Solver doesn't let us define that. We'll force it into giving us a radially symmetric design by only drawing one third of the wheel. The one third is a bit arbitrary, it could be a quarter, a fifth, etc. Play around with it a bit until you get a result you're happy with. The first step in setting up the simulation is setting the central hole as our fixed constraint. This area needs to be defined as a geometry the model needs to maintain. We'll generate a keepout zone around the central hole as a bearing or shaft will most likely exist here. The outer perimeter of the wheel should be defined as a pressure. The wheel needs to be equally strong at any point as it rotates. To accomplish this, we'll apply a constant pressure to the whole outer perimeter. The magnitude is not important since we're only applying one force. Next, we'll apply planes of symmetry for the remaining solid. This keeps the wheel balanced and will also reduce the simulation time. Next, jump into the settings panel and reduce the size of the mesh to help provide a more accurate result. Do one final check to make sure the simulation setup is complete and then run the simulation. When the result is ready, turn off some of the simulation setup visualizations. Analyze the result to ensure the solution makes sense. Did the solver generate a symmetric shape that could be balanced? Check out the slider to see the different weight saving options and how the shape changes correspondingly. Promote the simulation result back to the model space. This will create a new body that can be used as a reference to redraw the optimized part. When drawing the shape, it's important to think about how the part will be made. If you're machining it, check out my video on machining for some tips and tricks. The key is to keep things simple, an approximation, and always consider the manufacturing method that will be used. Here, you can see I'm tracing out the shape using the sketch tool. Now I'm only drawing one leg because later I'm going to come back and use the mirror feature to duplicate the feature. That way I don't have to spend extra time duplicating my own result. I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some fillets to smooth things out. This is always a good idea as it will reduce stress concentrations. Once that's complete, I can use the mirror tool and flip the part over to the other side. I'll come back in and combine those two solids together. Next, I can pattern these in a circle to create the wheel. Because I did one third, I'll create three duplicates. And again, I'll combine those together. Where there's sharp edges, I'll once again come in and use fillets to smooth things out. Here's a look at the final wheel. Now I need to actually verify that the shape drawn will be strong enough using an FEA simulation. To do this, I'm first gonna add a little flat at the bottom of the wheel here. I'll use this later on as a fixed constraint. Next, I need to apply a material to the wheel. What am I going to be making this out of? For this example, I'll apply a plastic. I'll switch over into the simulation workspace. The first thing I'll do is I'll fix the bottom of that wheel there. Next, I'll come in and I'll apply a load to the center shaft. This will be equivalent to the weight of my rider or whatever I'm expecting the weight of my vehicle to be. I'll make sure it's pointed in the correct direction. I'll come in and I'll adjust the mesh settings. That way things are a little bit more accurate. Check the simulation and then I'll run it. Here are the results of the simulation. The two things we're interested in are displacement and stress. I'll show an animation so we can better understand what the material is doing. Here you can see how the stress develops in the wheel as the load is cyclically applied. Here's the displacement. You can see how the center hub moves back and forth. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to visualize this if you exaggerate the movement. Here I've exaggerated the movement. 
This is the stress of the material. We want to make sure that the maximum stress does not exceed the yield strength of the material. If we look back to the original generative simulation output, we'll see that the fork spokes at the bottom are actually hollow. Now this might be very difficult to manufacture for something like casting or machining, but for 3D printing, it's totally feasible. So if we want to further optimize the strength to weight ratio of this part, we can duplicate that geometry. I'll do that here by drawing a box and dimensioning it to about the same size as the simulation recommended. Once that's drawn, I'll do a revolved cut to remove that material. Next, I'll want to come back in and add a generous fillet to all internal radii. Adding fillets to internal radii is always important to remove any stress concentrations. This is almost always where the material will break if you have sharp internal corners. I'll move the tree forward again and this will apply that feature to every spoke in the wheel. To verify the results, I've run another simulation. You can see that the maximum stress has increased slightly, but is still well within the limits of the material. Make sure for whatever wheel geometry you're designing that this is the case. Here's an exaggerated view where you can see the wheel flexing up and down much further than it would in real life. We'll zoom in at the new feature and take a closer look to see what's going on. You can see those stresses building up in the corners where the fillets were added. If that was a sharp internal corner, those would be much higher. Here, you can see the three versions of the wheel. The first is a solid disc, which represents 100% of the original mass. The second is the machinable version. This is 53% less mass than the solid disc. And finally is the 3D printed concept that's 61% less mass. Interested in learning more about mechanical design and materials? Here are two fantastic books that I own both of, and they've both been Bibles for a lot of my design projects. The first is Shigley's Mechanical Design, and the second is Ashby's Material Selection. Links for both are in the description below. For more information on this topic, as well as other how-to videos and additional projects, check out my website, adambender.info.